Hi, everybody. Father Ed Wade here. It's uh, 7.15 Thursday night. I have uh, on the 20th of, uh, 20th of August. And the result of my doing this, this, this uh, video tonight is based on a, I had a terrible night sleeping last night. Uh, I just laid, I lied in bed and just was kept on thinking about all that's going on in the world. And, um, and the thought came to me about a video. And uh, based on what I've been seeing, I mean, you know, I, I've always been apolitical. I don't get into politics, but I don't know how you can separate myself as a priest and a human being, and I'm an American, with what's going on in this country and not just the world. We see more division. We see the Jews against the Arabs. We see the Protestants against the Catholics. Um, uh, in Ireland, in certain places, we see the, uh, the Muslims against Christians. Uh, and then now in the United States, uh, we see the progressives, the liberals against the conservatives, uh, Antifa, uh, Black Lives Matter, of course, Black Lives Matter, but every every life matters. White lives matter too. Red faced Indian, American Indians lives matter. Orientals, the yellow skin or whatever, they all matter. We all matter because every one of us are made in the image and likeness of God. My problem is with the toxic environment coming out of the left, the leftist, especially in Black Lives Matter. If they, if they really mattered to me, they'd be in front of Planned Parenthood. They would be. Because the majority of the abortions in Planned Parenthood are on black babies. So this idea of Black Lives Matter, give me a break. You know, you got to be consistent. But anyway, uh, I'm looking here. I can hear you. You can't hear me. Okay, can't hear you. Mary Hutchinson says she can't hear you. Powell says right there with you. Okay, well, now, anyway, I was lying in bed, and this idea of the video came to my mind. And it brought back an event that happened years ago. Uh, I was a baby at this particular time. But a very dear friend of mine, John Koenig, who I went to high school with, we both left the high school. He, we both went in the Marine Corps, college and Marine Corps. He went to Elon. I went to Villanova. Uh, and then eventually in Washington and the seminary and what have you. I'll go into that. That's previous previous talk. But anyway, and that kept on coming back to me about something that happened in 1942. I want to read a couple of things. I've got this. Uh, I took a, I took some notes, so I just want to I want to I want to talk about it. And. Um, <clears throat> On February 3rd of 1943, right outside of Greenland, a troop transport was taking soldiers into the European theater. And there was what they call the German wolf pack of submarines attack these, attack these, um, these, uh, these ships and torpedoed one of them. It's called, was called the Dor Dorchester. And of course, all the soldiers that, that weren't killed at the initial torpedo were trying to get off the boat, getting life jackets, jumping in a, jumping into uh, lifeboats and what have you. And there were four chaplains on this boat, four chaplains. One, their names were, I wrote them down, uh, Clark Poling, John Washington, Alexander Good, and George Fox. One of them was a Jewish rabbi. Another one was a Catholic priest and two were Pentecost Protestants. Now, they could have been Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Baptist, who knows four men and they all had their they all had their life 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 jackets so four soldiers there were four soldiers left in the boat and they came up and they saw these cha and the chaplains all took their life raft, their life jackets off and gave them to these four soldiers and the four soldiers got into the boat and these four men these four chaplains the boats going down and the men in the in the boat are looking back and these four men a Jew, a Catholic, and two Protestant chaplains, they're all four chaplains, all holding hands as the boat sank. And these, these young men saw this. They saw this happening. And I was so impressed with that. And there was a chapel that was built. It's in Philadelphia, my hometown. And you can get some information on this. It's www.4chaplains.org. Uh, if you want to do some research on this. But that came to me last night, especially as I'm listening to the rhetoric of the, uh, of, of well, it's the Democrat convention. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the Republican convention. 
but the filth coming out of their mouth, the pure hatred, the pure hatred uh, for President Trump, uh, and, the, uh, and the, I'm repeating myself, the language and the bitterness and the advancement of Marxist socialism, that's so evident uh, with what's going on in here. So anyway, the, 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 you, see this, the, you see this kind of stuff happening and uh, they're, they're going to you try to unify the country, and I'm laughing. I, I'll tell you, I was almost on the floor laughing. They're going to unify the country, Chris. They can't even unify themselves. You got the progressives against the moderates and what have you, even within the Democratic Party. It's a blooming joke. Now, of course, you have the same division, some division, even the, product, the public Republicans too. But my point was, was the event itself. And I'm and I'm thinking as I'm lying in bed and I'm thinking to myself, well, what's going on here? in this country is going on in the heavenlies. If you read uh, the book of Revelations, chapter 12, the whole chapter about the beast, the, the beasts and the dragon being uh, being thrown out, the devils being thrown out into the earth to wreak havoc, going to the women and her progeny. You got to read it. And all this came to me uh, very, very clearly that what we see happening right now, right, right this moment, this week, at this convention, and hopefully, God willing, it will not continue with the Republicans, but who knows, let's wait and see, uh, this, this this bitterness. And so when I was thinking about uh, sharing with you on this was the unity without, unity without uniformity. We can have unity. Now, let me, let me share something with you on unity, because I really believe it's important. You know, that the Jesus, uh, there's unity in the Trinity. There's unity in the Trinity. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And Jesus was born into a family. He had a mother and a father. Unity, unity, until he was renewed his mission. And in Revelations chapter 17, verses 20 and the following, it says, I pray not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me through their word so that they may all be one as you, Father, and I are one, and I and you, that they also may be one in us, and the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I give them, I, I in them and them in me in perfection is one, that they would know that you sent me and that you love them as, as, even as you love me. Father, they are your gift to me, I wish that where I am, they also may be with me. Now, the reason why Jesus came is to make, to bring us with him. And eventually we're all going to die. We're all going to die. I don't know how much time I got left. We're all going to die. And we're all going to stand before God in judgment. We're all going to stand before God in judgment. Even me as a priest, the popes, the bishops, the priests, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, Kamala, Kamala Harris, we're all going to stand. We're all, we're all going to have to give an accounting for our, for our, for what we've done with our lives. And so in all this, what I see happening, all this going on is for one thing only, for power, for power to, to not only to throw Trump out, it could be some other president, but they want to get power because they want to control your life and my life. And so they're going to do everything away from the American flag to the Constitution, to the Bill of Rights and what have you. And so we see this battle going on this rage going on against uh, not only the president of the United States, but it's against us. This tremendous, uh, you, you, when you look, when you look, when you look at the Democratic platform, uh, I don't know how many people you, you've watched this study, open up a book and read, but when you look at the, uh, the, 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 the principles of communist Marxism, and what Engels and Marx and Lenin and Stalin and et cetera, et cetera all found the principles. I put it on my Facebook page. You can read it if you want to. You look at the principles of their agenda, and then you look at what the communist agenda, the communist manifesto, and then you see and you look clearly at the platform of the Democrats. What do you see? What do you see when they remove God from their platform? You can't even hear the word God. They laugh and mock at God. This is a political party that wants to run your life and wants to run my life. I want to tell you what to eat, what to think, how to live and do everything. They want complete control. And they don't want us to have control. They don't want you to have control. Their hatred of the family, the redefinition of marriage, uh, where, you know, uh, you know, homosexual activity becomes normal. Let's just be able to wait a minute. 
I, I work, minister many times with men and women who struggled with same-sex attraction. That's one thing. It's another thing, not just to, to deal with it. It's those who are living it out and performing it like it's normal, like it's a natural kind of a thing. And so we really define marriage to be between two men and two women. Uh, well, it, it can't happen. You know, one woman can never marry another. Maybe a law was made, a human law, but it doesn't trump the figure of speech. It doesn't trump God's moral law. God's moral law. God created male and female. He created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, or Susie and Lucy. That's what he did. He did that. And so, and then we see what they're doing in Portland in certain places where they're burning Bibles. They're burning Bibles where closing down churches. Church church can't, you can't have religious services. You can't sing. Uh, one bishop even said, if a priest speaks more than five minutes, uh, you know, he's, he, he, could be, he could be suspended. Uh, I'm not going to talk to the, about the bishop. I just happened to see this and I'm thinking to myself, this is one of the reasons, one of the reasons sometimes we have so, so much poor preaching. And I put myself in that sometimes. I'm given, I've given some losers. Sometimes I've done some good stuff, but I've done it. But they walk out the door. They're going out. People are going out the door. And, and so uh, not being able to have communion, not being able to have the Eucharist, uh, th there's, a, there's, there's an attack. And we've got we've to look outside of these events and see what's going on. And Catholics and Christians have got to wake up, got to wake up. And that's why I'm doing this. That's why I did this video tonight to see this, the signs of the time. So I would encourage you, if you haven't, get a hold of my, go, go through my Facebook, my Ed Wade Facebook and uh, my Ring of Fire Facebook and on YouTube. I think Jennifer Sinclair is uh, videoing this right now. So she's gonna put it on, she's gonna put it on YouTube. And what I plan to do hopefully tomorrow at one o'clock central time is to do a mass, a live mass right here right here in my room. I can't, I have a, a, a neuropathy on my left foot and a type, also a torn quadricep. So I find it, I can't always stand still for a, a long period of time. So I sit. And so I went, what I might do is have mass here tomorrow. I'm really going to give it consideration and to have a mass for healing, to pray for healing. Pray for my own healing for God's sake. You can pray for me, why the mass, right? And I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to do it right here. I hope Jen's available. If not, I'll still do it. And then uh, when she when she's free, she can upload it onto YouTube, and what have you. But anyway, let let let's pray. You know, the gates of hell. Jesus told us the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. But he never said that the devil wouldn't do his damnest to do it. And he's and he's doing it. And he's using this pandemic, this Wuhan Chinese virus, as one thing the closing down of churches, the closing down of schools, all these kind of things, telling people they can't even sing. I mean, that's how absurd this is going in some dates. Uh, and uh, just the other day in this comfort, the Michigan governor, I can't even think of her name, is probably just as well. She's, she was caught on a hot mic using the word mf -er. You know what I mean? Motherfucker, excuse my French, I'm wearing a collar. But that's what she said. And the hot mic caught it. And she was talking about Republicans. And I'm thinking to myself, my God, what have we come to in this country? What have we come to now? All we've got to do is go back to the Covadaria in Fatima, Portugal in 1917, when Our Lady of Fatima spoke to Jacinta, Lucia, and Francesco and told her and told them that if we didn't repent as a country and a nation in the world, Marxism and communism was going to come in this country was going to come in throughout the world and look at the spread of it look at the spread of it look at what's going on in venezuela and and, and cuba and china and russia and north vietnam and etc 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 and 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 we say it couldn't happen in the united states well wake up folks because it is happening so we're living in a time where we need to repent we need to get back it's never too late and we call on Our Lady, our Mary, Mother of God. We call upon you to crush the head of the serpent before it's too late. Uh, we we want to repent for our sins as individuals, me as a priest, you as lay people, and this nation, and this nation, for first of all, for abortion. Can you, can you imagine? I mean, even animals take care of their babies. 
And we've come to the point, either through contraception where we don't allow a baby to come into life, or we abort them before they're born, or even after they're born, we abort them, and Pelosi and Biden support this, and they're supposed to be Catholic. Hello? If they're a Catholic, I'm a man in the moon. I'm a man in the moon. And there's, there's representatives and there's senators of both parties that are, that are holding for this. And then we, find, we also, it's a proven fact that we're using these body parts of, of, the, of the child's where their, their body parts are sucked out of the womb of their mother after they're burned alive and chopped up and it's being sold for money. This is a fact. This is all verifiable. I'm not making this up. And, and so we see, and why wouldn't God come to the point and say, enough is enough? And I'm waiting for the hammer to fall. I'm waiting for the hammer to fall. Because it's coming. It's, it's, it's coming. But my prayer is that people like Nancy Pelosi, I don't hate her. I pray for her because her soul's in jeopardy. And so is Biden. What good does it do if you gain all the power in the world and you lose your soul? Is it worth it? Is it worth to lose your soul to spend time, eternity in hell, face to face with Lucifer and looking at him constantly instead of dying in the state of grace and looking at Christ and Our Lady and the saints and the martyrs and all those who have gone before us. What could be better than that? But you see, we choose to do it. Now, Christ isn't going to send us there. We're going to send ourselves by the choices that we make. And so I feel very much alerted that I'm called to do this. People sometimes say, even priests, oh, you get political, you're political. And I said, well, I want to be with the people. I, yeah, of course I want to hear confessions and say mass and and and, and uh, baptize and stuff like that. I'm, I, I I love that kind of stuff when I'm able to do it. But I really realize that the people are in the trenches out there, the lay people that are watching this, husbands, wives, they're out there. They're being eaten alive by the politicians, school boards. And what's going on out there? There's a paradigm shift. And we're not going to speak up. We're playing games as bishops and priests. And that we're, we're afraid to talk about this stuff. There go I by the grace of God. I keep on looking at the book of Ezekiel. If I tell you to say something and you don't say it because people are lost, I hold you accountable. And I got to give an accounting for my priesthood. This priesthood that he, he gave me. I got to give an accounting for that. And so I'm, 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 coming, I'm coming, quote, out of the closet in the sense I can't play it safe anymore. I don't want to play it safe. I don't want to play it safe. You know, yeah, well, Father, someone, somebody said they're going to come and get you and throw you in jail and you know, kill you. They're going to come and get you. And I said, well, yeah, maybe so. But they didn't think, did they do that to Jesus? Did they do that to Peter, Paul, and the apostles? Look at the martyrs. Well, look at the martyrs. Anyway, there I go again. I'm giving a homily, and I didn't mean to do that. Okay, well, look, you got my drift. Again, the, the title of this talk is Unity Without Uniformity. That's the title I want to give it. And let me just give you the names of those four chaplains who gave up their lives, who gave their, who gave their life jackets. Charles uh, Clark Pauling, John Washington, Alexander Good, and George Fox. And this was on February 3rd, 1943, when the Wolfpack submarine sunk their ship and they willingly gave up their lives. And the last thing that they, these soldiers and Latinos, probably blacks, whites, red Indians, looked back and saw these four men embracing one another going down. Greater love it has that no man who lays up his life gives his life for someone else. And are we living in those times? Yes, we are living in the great historical confrontation of St. John Paul II, when he said in 1976 at the Eucharistic Conference in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, prior to becoming Pope and then a saint, he said, we are living in the greatest historical confrontation humanity has ever known. We are now doing battle with the church, the anti-church, the gospel, the anti-gospel, and the Christ and the anti-Christ. And God's providence is letting this happen. You can, you can read that whole text of what it's so anyway Lord Jesus I ask your blessings upon those people that watch this video and Lord watch over them raise up raise up saints among our lay people 
fathers, mothers, grandfathers, grandmothers, teenagers, young people. Raise up saints of the laity and I just want to be with them, Lord Jesus. I want to be with them. Wherever they are, I want to be. I want to be in the foxhole with them. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. And think about that Mass tomorrow at 1 o'clock Central Time that I'll be doing here in my room for you, praying for healing. God love you and God bless you. Amen. <laughs>